There we go. So as we were saying, <clears throat> um, you're already bringing in so many enrollments now, but and you're just at the very beginning of the curve, and it'll be going up to something like. Well, yeah, we expect it to at peak load go up to a million or maybe even two million enrollments a day, and this would happen perhaps in about a year or two years when there's a large number of others in our system. There might be like 400, 500 million others in the system. And then when you get a million, let's say, uh, enrollments, new enrollments at that time, you will have to sort of compare each one of those enrollments against the entire 500 million, million people in the database. And when you multiply the number of, uh, I mean, when you figure out the number of matches that we have to do, it turns out to be really, really large, something like 14 billion matches a second. And so that is to ensure that we don't issue two others to anybody, that it's truly unique. So what are the, in terms of, of developing the system to, to, to do all those matches, what were, what were the biggest hurdles that you had to overcome? Um, well, of course, uh, firstly, we had to ensure that the biometrics that we captured would work in the Indian setting. That is, there's a lot of people in rural India and uh, they do a lot of uh, work with their hands. So a lot of their, uh, you know, their fingerprints, the, the ridges disappear, they, they get completely bald. So there's not much information out there for us to match. So that was one thing we were concerned about, to ensure that it includes everybody and not just sort of white collar workers and urban people um, whose fingerprints are in better quality. Um, so of course we took both the fingerprints as well as uh, the, all the 10 fingerprints as well as the irises, two irises, because the, um, you don't damage your eyes uh, like you would wear out your fingers. Uh, so the information pretty much stays the same. Uh, and uh, we also added a third uh, biometric, which was the photograph of the face. Right? So with those three, we were pretty sure that we would be able to issue unique IDs for pretty much everybody, the 1.2 billion residents. So that was a, a big challenge to ensure that the biometrics that we captured were sufficient to get the uniqueness. Um, and well, there were uh, other challenges, there are technology challenges. Uh, like I mentioned, huge compute-bound problem. You need thousands of computers to crank out, uh, crunch the numbers to do these uh, matches. Uh, thirdly, there's, you know, we need to train a lot of operators. The people who want to capture biometrics and enter the information about uh, the residents. And that has to be done um, carefully. I mean, the quality has to be pretty good. Um, so we have to build training programs and certification programs and uh, so on. So those were some of the key challenges. And then you were talking yesterday about just the sheer issue of scale because this, this database, this will be so much bigger than any other biometric database that's ever been created. Right. right? Right. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the largest system as of day uh, date is the uh, U.S. U U.S. Visit program. I think it's about 120 million uh, entries in biometrics uh, database, and obviously the the Indian database would be much larger, ten times as large. Uh, so there are a lot of questions. You know, could it uh, scale linearly? Uh, the system degrade as we have larger and larger numbers of people in it. Uh, so that's uh, a huge complexity. The second is, you know, in the federal uh, structure that we live in, uh, where the states do the implementation, um, uh, we as a central agency can come up with standards and set, uh, you know, sort of, can be the traffic cop to set the uh, rules, but it gets implemented differently in each state. So how do you ensure standard, uh, a standardized database when different entities and different registrars are um, enrolling? Uh, that's that's another uh, big challenge that we have, and we have tried to address that largely uh, based on standards. We have biometric standards, we have the uh, KYR standards of the fields that we capture name. And, know your resident. Right, the know your resident standards, which captures the name, address, gender data. But there's yet another you know, sort of interesting problem. I don't think we uh, talked about it yesterday. Uh, see, a lot of the poor people in India don't have an existing identity card. Yeah. So that's the reason for Aadhaar, to ensure that everybody is covered and they can access government benefits and so on. But we ask for this POA and POI documents. Proof of address and proof of identity. identity. Uh -huh. 
Uh, but it's in some sense self-defeating. If I were to say, well, give me an identity and I'll give you a better one, uh, that doesn't solve the problem. That works maybe for a bunch of us in urban India who have certain forms of identity. But here, we're trying to do this project to cover everybody and make sure that everybody's included. So how do you do that? If they don't have an identity and you're creating a new one, uh, how do you ensure that the data that they've given is correct? So we brought up, uh, we uh, got this concept of uh, an introducer, someone who can uh, sort of vouch for you and say, well, I know this guy, and yeah, he lives there, and yeah. Uh, so his, the details that he's filled out are perfectly fine, and fill out his own UID number and authenticate that transaction. So that's another feature that uh, uh, we sort of brought about to address this very real problem of people without mm -hmm. existing identity, identity documents. Right. And lastly, why, why are you doing this? What's, so, what's the most exciting part about it? What's, what, what's so great about this project that you've decided to come on board? Well, um, firstly, it's a technology project, and my background is in technology. Uh, I've been solving complex problems, whether it's chip design or whatever, internet technologies or whatever in the past. And uh, uh, it's probably one of the most challenging technology projects in the world uh, at this point. So that's, that in itself is very um, attractive. But um, I think the more attractive part is the fact that it's going to affect uh, the lives of a large number of people in, uh, you know, in a very positive way. Uh, it'll mainstream. Uh, a large number of poor people to be able to access government benefits, uh, perhaps bring them into you know sort of these financial inclusion programs so that they they can uh, uh, do banking transactions right from where they are in their villages and so on. So there, are, I think, a huge number of positives if we can layer uh, all these services and applications on top of the other system. So that's why I'm here. All right. All right. And, and lastly. <clears throat> there are, there have been, you know, a bunch, as we were talking about yesterday, uh, quite a few sort of uh, civil liberties advocates um, have raised the concern that this is, a, this is a lot of information, maybe too much information to have in the, in the hands, for the government to have all, all in one place like that. And your response is? Yeah. Well, um, we, uh, number one, we um, made a very conscious effort to collect very little information, in fact which is just four fields, name, address, gender, and date of birth. That's besides the biometric information. Uh, secondly, we, may, we actually designed the system to ensure data safety and protection. That is right from the enrollment stations where the data is captured, the data is encrypted and sent to our servers, uh, and even within the servers, no, uh, none of our service providers have access to that information. And thirdly, when you authenticate using your fingerprints and so on, the response is just a yes or no. We don't give out any information to any agency, even the user agencies. So a lot of safeguards are in place uh, to ensure that uh, there's no violation of privacy, and, you know, that the data that belongs to people is not uh, sort of out there. So that's, uh, I think, I think that that's, my, my uh, own feeling is that the advantages of having an Aadhaar-like system uh, to deliver benefits, uh, uh, especially government uh, benefit schemes, to the poor especially, far outweigh the, uh, uh, the concerns. And I'm sure the, the concerns are very real and um, I think we ought to be concerned about it. Uh, but I think we can uh, put in place good security systems and measures to address those concerns. All right.